Hello everybody, my name is Andrew Bentley, I'm with the Specify Project um, and I'm going to be leading, leading you through a presentation on um, the history of Specify, where it's come from, where we're going to, some of the innovative technologies that we're incorporating into Specify. Um, and so I will lead you through a presentation that will hopefully give you some more, a better understanding of Specify um, and its inner workings. So let's start right at the beginning um, in terms of what is, what is Specify. Essentially, Specify is a collection management tool that allows you to um, efficiently computerize your collections and then mobilize that information onto the internet. It consists of a highly customizable forms-based interface, um, which allows you to customize your collection based on your particular discipline. It has powerful querying tools for you to be able to query into your database and figure out what you have in your, in your collection. Um, and it has some robust reporting uh, tools which allow you to then print labels, print loan forms, whatever the case may be. The aims of the project are to advance biological collections, computing, um, communication and collaboration, not only through the software that we provide, but also through the services that we provide to our users. The system is freely distributed and licensed um, at no charge to non-profit collections and is completely open source. Um, and the web address down at the bottom there will lead you to more information about the project and, and um, about the software itself. Specify has been around for um, about 25 years. We've had five, 15 major releases in that, in that time. Uh, Specify started off as a DOS-based package called Muse and has advanced through various different um, incarnations right the way through um, Oz and Specify 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and now in its latest incarnation is Specify 6. Um, we've increased the functionality and features of Specify over, these, over this period um, and it's been consistently supported by NSF since 1987. Um, Specify is developed in Java, which opens up all sorts of doors for us in terms of it being Mac, PC and Linux compatible. So you can run it at a server environment and have multiple different um, systems connecting up to the same database. It's designed to be database agnostic. We ship it with MySQL to try and keep it as open source as possible. But it is designed to be database agnostic and there are no um, triggers built into the system that would prevent it from working with MSSQL, Postgres, Oracle, whatever the case may be. As I mentioned, it's open source. Um, all of the code is available through a FOSS GPL2 license. And we have a staff of about eight people here in Kansas who are attending to the programming, the development, the conversions and user issues um, for all of our clients. We have an, a, a very extensive data model which we have expanded and augmented over the years. Um, and this is essentially what the data model looks like, 143 tables, about 2,400 fields, a truly relational system where all of the tables are interlinked uh, between each other um, and no one field is duplicated within the system, making it um, essentially a truly relational system. We have representative of all the natural history disciplines within Specify, um, over, uh, over 435 collections in 29 countries at the moment. Over 160 of those are U.S. institutions in 48 states, and we have about 10 million specimens catalogued in Specify at the moment. All of those numbers are obviously increasing over time as we have more and more clients joining, um, joining Specify. The system is designed to be a collection management platform. Um, we would design the nuts and bolts of the system and then have either us or other people design pluggable component, components that would plug into Specify and allow us to extend the functionality and take advantage of all the new technologies that are out there. It's designed to be truly multi-collection and discipline capable, meaning that you can put multiple disciplines and multiple collections all into the same database and various pieces of that data are then shared across these multiple collections. There are a number of third-party applications that are out there that we have taken advantage of as well. One of them is the georeferencing engine developed at Tulane called Geolocate. And the other one is Google Earth for visualizing your information on a map. There are also a number of web services and online providers that you can take use of um, by incorporating these, these into Specify so that you can look at this kind of data um, directly from within Specify. We also have a number of strategic partnerships that we are involved in. Um, one of which is the filtered push program out of Harvard, which is an annotation system of being able to push and pull annotations between different systems. The other one is a botanical OCR component, which was developed at Michigan um, for being able to OCR label data for botanical collections. 
We also have an agreement with, with Morph Bank, uh, which is an image bank for pushing and pulling images uh, uh, back and forth from Morph Bank. And then a similar agreement with the Barcoding of Life Initiative up in Guelph in Canada um, for doing the same thing with DNA barcodes. Specifies design to be a staged frequent release process um, where we are constantly working on bug fixes and new functionality, adding them into the product and every time you start up Specify, it will alert you to the fact that there is a new release out there that you can then incorporate um, into your system and have all of the latest bug fixes and um, new functionality. Now there are obviously a number of other systems out there, so why Specify? Um, there are a number of systems out there, KEMU, PassPerfect, Index, Kentucky Ensys, the list goes on. All of these other packages have some limitations or cost prohibitations for small to medium sized museums. The big one is obviously cost, as I mentioned Specify is free, it doesn't cost the end user anything to use it or, uh, or implement it. One of the other benefits of Specify is the flexibility and customization that we offer to our users. The whole system is completely customizable, um, all of the forms can be customized, additional fields can be added in or removed depending on your particular scenario. We cover all disciplines, a number of these other packages are specifically designed for an individual discipline. The asterisk is there because we obviously do not cover things like live collections, um, um, aquarius or zoos or, or those sorts of collections and also we do not cover anthropology but, uh, but all of the natural history disciplines are covered in Specify. The system's open source and so is essentially community driven. A lot of these other systems um, are essentially a black box. You don't know what you're getting when you, when you, when you uh, sign up. The wealth of features that Specify brings to the table. Um, I don't think there is another package out there that can, that, can, um, that can brag about the wealth of features that Specify brings to its clients. And then also the support and, long, and longevity of the program. Obviously, we are on a four-year grant cycle, but we have been consistently funded by NSF since 1987 and don't see that changing in the near future. Um, in order to install Specify, there are a number of components that you need on your machine. Obviously, you need MySQL as the back engine to run the database itself. You need Java on your machine. Most machines come with Java pre-installed and then you need Specify which you can go and freely download off of our website. It can function in a server or a standalone environment, you can install it on a single machine and run it um, from there, or you can install it on a server and have multiple machines connecting up to the database, thereby allowing multiple people to be doing data entry into the system at the same time. We do also have a Specify EasyDB version which has the MySQL engine embedded into the actual installation itself meaning that you don't have to install MySQL onto your system. Um, it's specifically designed for smaller institutions that are going to be installing Specify on a single machine um, or for testing. We use it a lot for testing um, and showcasing people what Specify can do. When you install Specify there are a whole bunch of executable files that are installed onto your machine that allow you to do all sorts of different things. There is a backup restore facility that allows you to back up your database and restore it back to any particular point in time. We have a wizard program that will lead you through the process of creating a, an initial database that you can use for um, starting to database your specimens. Um, we have an iReports version that allows you to design labels, loan forms, gift forms, whatever the case may be. And then we also have a data exporter which is used for um, joining IPT and getting your data mobilized onto the web. We do also supply a number of services to our, to our users. Um, we will convert your data, we will design data forms for you, we will design reports for you, um, and these are all hand handled through our user support desk, um, and you can contact them to, um, to get more information about that. We also have a, we a, a website that has a wealth of information, a number of documents um, are on the website that will lead you through certain processes. We also have um, some videos of various, um, various components and how to use them. We also have a user forum that allows users to collaborate with each other and communicate with each other, thereby not having to um, rely just on us to um, answer any questions that they may have. So when we were doing an initial um, investigation of Specify 6 and, and were um, speaking to all of our Specify 5 users, the number one request that we got from our users for features was the ability to be able to take data from an Excel spreadsheet and upload it into your database in some sort of easy fashion. And so what we did is we designed this thing called the workbench. 
which essentially allows you to import data from an Excel spreadsheet, map that data up to the fields within your database, and then successfully uh, manipulate that data and bring it into your database in one fell swoop. So the mapping editor looks something like this. Um, it's essentially a method where you take, on the, on the right hand side, you take all of your Excel spreadsheet columns and you map them up to fields and tables in the data model so that you can pull that data into your database and augment it and, and do whatever you need to with that particular data. Once you bring it into the system, there are all sorts of validation tools built into the workbench that will validate the data in that data set against the existing data in your database so that you can get an idea of whether any of those fields are invalid or whether any of those fields are going to be newly created in your database based on the data that you are pulling in. There are also all sorts of tools at the bottom where you can attach images to rows, you can geo-reference your records, etc, etc. So there are these additional tools that you can use for cleaning up your data, augmenting your data, manipulating the data before you actually bring it into your database. Um, you can also flip across to form view and you can create these little data entry forms in the workbench um, specifically for dumbing down the data entry process if the, if the data entry forms are a little bit too um, complex for specific users. You can create these very simplistic data entry forms for people to be able to enter data into the workbench and then pull it into the database from there. So as I mentioned, one of the things that you can do is you can attach images to individual rows in a work set and essentially in the herbarium scenario you could use those, those images to then do data entry into the, works, into the data set directly from the image. One of the pathways that we are thinking of um, making data entry that much easier and that much quicker is using images from uh, herbarium labels or any other collection for that case um, to be able to do data entry into those rows. We've also incorporated some of the, some of the additional tools into the workbench. Um, this is the georeferencing um, engine um, screen from the workbench where you can go in and you can georeference particular records using the geolocate system. You can see that it supports error estimates, it supports polygons, um, essentially it's just going out to the geolocate web service looking for a particular locality and a particular geography and then returning a result set for that geography. You can move the dot around on the, on the map to a specific portion. You can play around with the error estimate. You can manipulate the, the um, polygon and create your own polygons on the map. You can get elevation estimates. You can measure on the map so you can get ideas of distances down roads, etc. And so all of that functionality is built into the workbench and allows you to geo-reference your records on the fly um, as you are bringing them into the database.